Welcome to the Crash Course in Pythagoras. In less than 10 minutes, I'm going to try to teach you everything that you need to know to get ready and get Pythagoras working. After that, only thing you need to know is how to explain your ideas to Pythagoras. It will do all the coding itself while you only need to explain what is happening, what you're seeing and what are your ideas. First, requirements. You need to have VS Code. You can download it just by Googling VS Code download. Then you need to have Python on your local machine, Node.js, and Mongo installed. To check if you have Python node and Mongo, you can just go to your terminal, type Python version, node version, and Mongo SH version. You need to have Python greater than 3.9, Node version 16 or bigger, and Mongo SH any version. If you don't have any of these packages, what you can do is just go to Pythagora Chat and type in, how can I install Node.js, for example, or Mongo or Python version 3.9 or greater on your OS, on Mac OS X, within the terminal. And right now, it will tell you exactly what you need to do to install any of these packages. If you're getting errors, just say to Pythagora, hey, I'm getting an error, this is my error, and just talk to it and it will explain you what you need to do to have these packages installed. Once you have all these packages, you can go ahead and start working with Pythagora. So, first thing what you do is just go to extensions, search for Pythagora, click on it and click install. Once it is installed, you can go ahead and start working with it. It will be right here in the sidebar as a triangle. This is a logo. And what you can do is you can just click create new app. After a couple of seconds, it will first ask you, what is the project name? You just add my app. Then it will ask you to describe your app in as much detail as possible. Here, you really want to be detailed. You want to explain everything that, that you have in mind, how the application will look like, how it will work, what will the users be experiencing. Here is one example of an initial description for an app. You can always start, hey, I want to create an app for managing job applications for my video production company. My process for reviewing candidates goes like this. First, I create a job title, and then you explain everything of what is happening and what needs this, what this application needs to do. In the description below, you can find more examples of how initial descriptions for Pythagora applications look like. Once you're happy with the initial description, you can just click send and let Pythagora go to work. So first, what it will do is it will choose a template if there is any to be used. You basically almost always want to use a template. This is so that it doesn't have to start from Hello World app. So it has a server set up and all these things. Here, I'm just going to click Yes. Then it will choose the technologies. And Node.js and Mongo stack are recommended to use because Pythagora works the best with in this stack. It can use any stack, but this is highly recommended to use Node.js and Mongo. After the whole environment is set up, Pythagora will start creating the development plan. Development plan consists of two layers. The first one are epics. This is like a higher level task. And then the next one are the actual tasks. So each epic is split into multiple tasks. After the task is completed, you can look at it in the progress tab right here. And you can see all the epics. And for each epic, you can see all the tasks that need to be done in each of the epics. So what Pythagora does is that it goes through all the tasks in the entire development plan one by one. And for each one, it first asks you, okay, hey, can I execute this task? If you want to execute it, click yes. If you want to add some things, click edit. And sometimes Pythagora will uh, try to implement something that is already implemented in the previous tasks. In those cases, just click skip task and continue on. So in this one, I'm going to click yes. Task development consists of a couple of things. First one is the breakdown. Here, Pythagora breaks down in a human readable language what needs to be done to get this task implemented. You can read this through, you can see code snippets and everything that Pythagora plans to do for this task to get implemented. Next, it will go through all files that are mentioned in the task breakdown, and it will try to, to implement them. For each file, it will go through a couple of stages, and once it's done, 
you can see the lines of code that are added, that are removed. And if you click on this button right here, you can see all the changes in that specific file. So lines of code that are added and lines of code that are removed. Finally, once all files are implemented, Pythagoras will determine how to test this task. And this is the crucial part where you, the human, come in. So here what you want to do is go step by step and test everything that Pythagoras is asking you to do. So first one is start the server using npm start. You can do this with terminal, but you don't have to. Pythagoras provides the start app button, which you can just click and it will open up the browser and open up your app right here. Open up the browser and visit the login page. Here, log in. If it will also tell you, hey, if if you don't have uh, an account register on this link, which I have right now, click on the job post link. On the job post, observe the list of posts if any exist. I'll just go to job post, but this is our first task, so there should be no job posts. If there is no job post, verify that there is a message indicating that there are no posts. And right now, since I don't have any job posts, all this is irrelevant for me. So for this one, I'll just say everything works. And right now, Pythagoras will go on to the next task. Implement a create new job post page with a form that indicates form, so on and so on. I'll just click yes. This way, Pythagoras will go through each of the tasks, do implementation, first break down what needs to be implemented, implement the code into the files, create testing instructions, and ask you to test it out. Pythagoras can also request a command run. It will ask you, hey, can I run this command? I'll just click yes. Pythagoras can also ask you to do a human intervention. Human intervention is when, when Pythagoras needs you to do something manually. So for example, in this case, it will tell you, hey, can you create an upload directory in the root of your project to store uploaded files? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly that. Finally, it will ask me to test all the steps again to make sure it is working. In this instance, I have followed all the four steps and on the fifth step, it says on the old job post page, click on the create new job post button. And right now, if I look at my uh, job post page, I don't see any of the buttons. So what I do right now is I click there is an issue. Keep in mind that getting an issue is completely normal. This is how software development works. Even the best developers in the world, when they write code, they get errors and they get errors very often. Getting errors is a normal part of software development. What you just need to do is debug it. And in case with Pythagoras, you just tell Pythagoras what is happening and let it debug the issue. Here, you just need to describe what is the problem. And almost always you want to add the logs so that Pythagoras can know what is happening on the back end and the front. So what I'll do here is I'll say when I open the old job post page. I don't see the create new post button. And almost always I put here, here are the logs. Copy server logs. And this will basically copy all the, the logs from the server. So once I describe the issue, I just click send. Now Pythagoras will understand how to reproduce the issue and write down what is needed to debug this issue. Tegra has two ways to go about it. One is to fix the issue right away, and the other one is to add the logs to find the bug. Keep in mind, this is a normal part of software development. Sometimes, even the best developers in the world, when they get an error, they don't know what is the problem. To find the bug, developers add logs so they can understand where is the problem. In this case, Pythagoras said adding more logs to identify the bug. Then it added the logs in these two files. If I click on any of these, you can see that it's console log here, it's console log there. It did the implementation. And after that, Pythagoras asks you to reproduce this issue again so that it can gather the logs and try to fix the issue in the next step. So what I'll do is I'll just click start app. It will refresh the page and this it will take all the logs during this process. I just click copy server logs, click send for the front-end logs, copy front-end logs, and this time there are no logs. So I'll just continue without logs. And here I can add any information, additional information that I want to tell. 
but this time I'll just continue without feedback. And right now it says that these logs give us valuable information about what is happening on the back end and the view. Let's analyze them. And after the analysis, Tegra found the bug and it's attempting to fix it, which you can see right here as well. So it breaks down it in steps, it does the implementation, and after that, it will ask us to reproduce the issue and see if it's fixed or not. So right now, I just click Start Add. There you go. Here is our Create New Job Post button. And right now, what I just do is I click Yes, the issue is fixed. Okay, so in this case, everything seems to be working fine. However, I dislike that I have to go to All Job Posts page to see this Create New uh, Job Post button. What I want to have it, I want to have it in the header. So I'll just click make a change and here I'll describe. Everything works, but I don't want the create new job post button to be on the all job posts page. Can you put this button in the header. I'll just click enter and it will go ahead and make my change. Then it will go through the entire project specification that you added in the beginning and it will update it so that it can understand that this change is actually something that we want to constantly have in mind. Do you want to accept these changes to the project specification. If this is something that changes the specifications, you want to click yes. Otherwise, just click no and it will continue. Then it again does the breakdown plan, write some code snippets, and then it will go to implementation. After the code monkey does the implementation, it comes back to the testing steps. So I'll just do a result click start app, and there we go. The button here is removed and it is here in new job post in the header. Right now we have an issue in the app. We have explained to Patagra and it seemed to have found the bug and uh, it attempted to fix it. However, after testing this again, it still doesn't seem to work. That is okay. Keep in mind that going through the bug hunting cycles a couple of times is completely okay. Even if you go it five to 10 times, that is completely okay. That is a part of software development. Nevertheless, if you want to dig deeper into the code base and if you're a developer yourself, what you can do is you can always go into pair programming mode. This is for more advanced users if you have been a developer before. If you click it, you will enter the mode in which you work with Pythagora on the code base itself. What it will do, it will explain the issue that is happening, how you can reproduce the problem that we're talking about, what are some areas to investigate, it will tell you what should you be looking at. So it will show you snippets of code. And finally, it will show you all the logs that you can look at to understand the, the issue better. So here it will tell you, hey, if you go to this file, you can click open in code and it will open up the file on the line where you have the, the log. It will say, this is the log. What is the exp explanation of this log? What is how it looks currently and how it it's supposed to look like and you can also look at for for the other logs this way you can understand the issue better right here you can either ask it a question if you want to understand better what is happening you can say i fixed the bug myself if you went into code and fixed it yourself you can ask it to tell you more about this bug if you click it it will do more explanation so that you can understand better what is happening here so that in the end you can help Pythagora debug it. Right now we can see more explanations about this issue. After that what you can do is you can say I know the problem and you can explain it. Problem is in the EJS template where it doesn't add the document name. After you give this hint to Pythagora, it will go through the entire process of implementation. But after it does the breakdown on what is actually needed, it will ask you, hey, is this the solution that you had in mind? Can I implement it or not? And right now I'm just going to click yes, and it will go into the actual implementation. Also, one thing to keep in mind is that you can always go back to the previous steps in development process. 
you can do here is just click stop. This will stop Pythagoras from running. And now just scroll up and wherever you see this reload button, you can go back to this stage. But let's say that I wanted to do something else in the previous task. And if I didn't debug something, I just click reload. And right now Pythagoras will roll me back to this step and I will be able to continue from here. So what I can do is obviously there were some changes in the files, so I can either click, click yes, keep my changes, then I will keep all the changes that were done in the next step, task, or I can just click no, restore Pythagoras to my last step. Right now I'm back to the previous testing steps and I can continue on as before. And finally, I want to show you the option for deployment. Once your app is ready, once you want to show it to the world, you can just go ahead click here, click deploy, and it will prepare and deploy your application. That's it, with one click.